Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy from Attic Treasures, etc. And today I just wanted to share a little trick that I learned, or that I figured out. I hadn't seen anybody else do it, but maybe somebody has. Um, but I have been hoarding window envelopes for a long time and finally decided it was time to sit down and play with them. And what I did is I made some pockets for junk journals and this one opens up on the side uh, and it's covered with napkin and you know when when you cover it and lots of people have done this so this part isn't new so when you want to um, cut out the window section you just of course take a, a, a wet q-tip or a paintbrush or something and just kind of dab water around the envelope and then you can um, take out the excess it just comes right out and so I made a few like that and this one has a pocket in the front and a pocket in the top I think some of them open on the sides but I think most of them open in the top and I decided to put a picture of something you know some sort of an image on the inside so that you can see it through the window just because I think that looks kind of cool so the napkin part was pretty easy and I was having a lot of fun with that as you can see I just you know decorated it up a little bit napkin on the inside napkin on the outside and I made a few like that but then I thought well I have other paper that I want to use I have um, this wrapping paper and um, then I had a map um, and this one was made with some packing paper from Amazon and some book page so I thought okay why don't I share what I figured out about how to cut the opening out because at first I was using sort of a stencil and just getting some straight lines and I was thinking there's got to be an easier way because the edges weren't very straight and it, it just didn't um, I don't know I just wasn't real happy with the way it came out so I thought there's got to be a better way well I have um, at times really bad insomnia but sometimes when you have insomnia you get really good ideas so then I realized I remembered that I had in my stash some tracing paper for sewing now this is really old I've had this for a long time but you can get it on Amazon you can probably get it in any fabric store so what what you do is this comes in a bunch of different colors and you can uh, just find a contrasting color to whatever it is you want to put on the envelope and then you trace the, the um, outline of the envelope with the tracing it's like carbon paper but nobody uses carbon paper anymore but anyway I'll show you how this works so what I what I did is I'm going to choose an envelope let's put this aside and I decided to, to work with this one right now but as you can see you can apply this method with ones that have double openings or small openings it doesn't matter what kind of weird shape opening your envelope has some of them some of them are, look like this where they have this little dog leg right there so it doesn't really matter what how many envelopes or what shape they are I mean how many windows or what shape they are but I decided just to go ahead and use this one because covering this with napkin you'd be able to see this through there unless you collaged underneath it or on top of it or something like that so the first thing that I'm going that I do is I cut a tiny little sliver off of both ends now I have gotten to the point where when I get stuff like this in the mail I open it really carefully I tamp it down so that whatever's inside is down at the bottom and then I just tear or cut off a sliver off of the top so that when I open it it's not all raggedy on the edges so the first thing that I do is I want to decide oh I'm not going to use this one because it has a little hole in there so let me let me grab another one let's let's try this one um well, that one's kind of raggedy let's try okay let's use this one this one doesn't look too bad so the first thing I do after I cut open 
the envelope so that it will open flat. Is then I look to see what I want to have showing through. And you can use any kind of image that you want. This is a great way to use up scraps. It's a great way to um, use up magazine images or book page or uh, old calendars or whatever you want to put in here to, to see through. Now I'm gonna put a journal card in here or a tag or something, but I like the, the way it looks when there's something showing through so that when the tag is taken out, there's like a little surprise there. So I went through my Victoria magazine. I've got a bunch of these. Um, I used to subscribe to it, but then I got rid of them all, of course, and now I'm in the process of collecting them all again. And I found a whole bunch of them at a garage sale for 10 cents a piece. And there's just these gorgeous images inside. I mean, just look at these, they're so pretty. So what I do is I, I go through the magazine and I just kind of open up the envelope and just sort of, I don't know, like look at that, isn't that cute with the ballet slippers? You don't have to use magazine images, you can use pretty much anything you want. But that's what I like to do. I like to see what would look good looking through here like so um i found this image here and i just thought this was really pretty because one thing i like about this image is that i can use more on here than just what's showing through the window there's also this bottom piece too that I'll use um, in this process and I'll show you how I do that. But what I want to do to cover the front of it is use a book page. And I have one here. And the way I do this is I um, Open it up this way, sorry. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. Okay, open it up this way, and it doesn't matter which side is showing through, although you want the you want it kind of so that the what you want showing on the front is on the bottom. Because what you're gonna do right now is you're gonna trace out this section right here using the tracing paper. So you put the tracing paper underneath, and I like to um, hold it in place, and I also like to line it up so that it's fairly straight, especially if it's book page, because that will, it'll show up if it's, you know, you'll be able to tell if it's crooked, and I don't like it when it's crooked. Okay, so I'm just trying to line it up the best I can. With the tracing paper and the tracing part has to be against whatever you're tracing onto whatever you want to be on the front because that's what's going to show so i'm just going to hold it in place with this gigantic paper clip okay so i'm seeing this this edge and this edge are fairly fairly straight to the lines on my mat and then I take my bone folder and just trace around the inside here. And press firmly, but you don't want to press so hard that you're going to tear the window part, the film. And I like to get that little radius in there because it's easier to cut when you can see it. So my husband had to get carbon paper at one point for some project he was doing and hardly anybody carries it anymore. Okay, so then I remembered I have this tracing paper. Well, duh, I hardly use it anymore. Okay, so I can see that just fine through there. And you can see it goes along the line of that tack, so that looks pretty good. 
All right. Now, the next thing, and just so you know, I took a cue from Shabby Tabby Doodah. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Tina from, I mean, Natasha. Okay, I'm going to get all these names straight. I'm so sorry. This is from... Uh, Natasha at Treasure Books where she writes out the instructions so that you can see what to do and, and what you need for this project. So um, I'll make a screenshot of this or let you take a screenshot when I'm all done. Okay, I've gotten lots and lots of ideas um, from some of the great YouTubers out there, including Tina and including Natasha. Okay, so what you do is you just kind of fold it lightly and make a little cut and then you just take the scissors and you just carefully cut on that mark that was made by the tracing paper. And go around the radius the best you can. And you can see that by doing this method, you, it doesn't matter what shape your window is in your envelope because you can trace the exact shape of it using the tracing paper. I've seen it on Amazon. Um, I know fabric stores carry it. What, what this is used for for sewing is for tracing the markings on the pattern onto your fabric. And sometimes I use it for that. That's why I've had it for so long. I, I don't really use it all that often, but sometimes I'll use it for marking darts and things like that. Okay, there we go. So that's not real straight right there, and you can kind of see where the where the line is okay so now it's just a matter of gluing it on one thing that I like to do is to leave a little bit overlapping the top and the reason I do that is because I like to fold it over to give this top edge a little bit more structure so that when you're putting things in and out of there, um, like a tag or a journaling card or something like that, it doesn't just, you know, rip and tear. You can also, at this point, if you want to, before you glue this on, you can um, reinforce this top piece with some washi tape. And so I'll show you how to do that. Okay, but the next thing, before I glue this on, I'm going to define the bottom part of my pocket. I'm also going to trim this little piece right there. Okay, so the I'm going to put a little pocket right here. So I just um, fold up the bottom about like so. And then that tells me where I'm going to trim the bottom of this paper. So that just defines it a little bit for me. Okay. So, why don't we go ahead and just reinforce this a little bit with some washi tape. Because this is pretty old paper and it, uh, it can be a little bit on the brittle side. Oh, let me see here. Okay, it doesn't have to be very wide or anything. But we know that this stuff doesn't really stick very well. So I'm going to go ahead and um, you know use a little bit of glue stick on it just to just to give a little bit of sticky. Okay. Now if you want, you can just you can have this show on the top as well, which I'm not going to bother because I'll probably put lace on top of it anyway. Okay. Right. There. Now I'm just going to fold it over and then that way it gives this 
gives this a little bit of structure. You can do that to the back too. And I will, since I'm, I'm gonna make this a, a top opening pocket. Okay, so now what I wanna do is um, put some glue on the front of this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way down because why not? It's not like I have a shortage of book page. Does anybody have a shortage of book page? <laughs> when I first started making junk journals, <laughs> I just thought I needed pretty much every type of book there was. And then I realized oh, you don't really need all that many. Especially if you're just going to do stuff like this. Okay. Now, I'm just going to lay that on there like so and burnish it down with this, my bone folder. And this is all going to get trimmed. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it. Okay, well, first of all, I'll trim off the bottom. So that's where my pocket's going to be on the bottom. I'm just going to trim that piece off. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a margin on the on the side as well. Again, just to kind of fold it over to give a little bit of structure. Okay. Now to fold it over. Close that up. Trim a little bit here, leaving a little bit of a margin. Okay, but I'm not going to um, glue it, these these sides down yet because I have more to do where I'm going to want to open it back up. So, but I can glue this part down. I'm just going to cut it here and cut it here and here and here. Okay. I have my trusty phone book again. that some some glue and wait do it closed I do I think that okay so now we've got that that top edge kind of reinforced this has some glue on it but that's all right it'll dry I'm not I shouldn't have done that right there but that's okay All right, now, um, now I want to put in my image, my, my image that I want to have showing through. And get that located where I think it looks the best. I really kind of like the flowers on the top. I like the flowers on the book. So... I'm going to, let's see, I think I will cut along here, and that way I can save some of this bottom part.
to put on the front of the pocket. Yeah, that looks good. Actually more like that. All right, so more glue. This only needs to go down to about there. Oh, there's a nice little line there just, just for me. Hope everyone's having a great day. It's been raining here most of the day. But, you know, we live in western Washington, so what else is it going to do, right? We were hoping to be able to go for a walk today. But that didn't happen, obviously. I'm just not a big fan of walking in the rain. Besides, it's cold. Okay. There, what do you think of that? You don't need to be in there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now I'll just trim. need to fold over. Yeah, I do need to fold it over. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here on the bottom. I mean on the, uh, on this overhang part. Let's glue you down while we're at it. I need to make a decision because if I'm going to want to put any lace or anything like that on here, if I'm going to do any sewing, I want to make sure that I do it at this point now. And that is right here. Right here. Okay. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to sew around the window and uh, sew on some lace. The lace that I'm going to use is, I don't want it to cover up too much of the picture, and I like, I like this. So that's what's going to go on the top. Um, so I'm going to sew the lace on first, and it's easier obviously to do that when it's open. Okay. I will be right back after I sew on the lace and I'm going to sew around the window as well. Okay, I'm back. I have sewn around around the window and of course I ran out of bobbin right in the middle of it, right here. But, you know, that's okay. Kind of cost of doing business, I guess. And um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to uh, put this part on the front, on the front pocket. So what you need to do here is, uh, you know, glue. In fact, I'm going to use art glitter glue for this part. I really want it to stay. So... Um, I'm going to glue that down real well. And you're going to glue this part closed so that when you, you know, open it up, it's there's nothing opening here. Unless you want a double pocket there, in which case, you know, that's probably, you know, not a bad idea. But 
for for this project what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that part closed and obviously um, stitching is totally optional I just like the look of it so let's see let's put some glue stick in the center and then art glitter glue on the edge Close that up. And then you kind of get busy with decorating. Now I can see that when I when I fold it up here, um, this bottom part didn't really get trimmed. It's right there in the fold. So I'm rather than try to cut that off, which I could do. Um, no, well, maybe I will. So just trim, trim off a tiny bit more so that it doesn't interfere with the fold. The other option, of course, is just making the pocket a little bit smaller. Okay. So that's going to be my pocket. Um, and now that I have that glued, now I can glue down the rest of this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue it shut with the art glitter glue on the inside edge because this is going to be a top loading pocket. If it was going to be a side loader, then obviously you would do the top. Okay, and then I'm going to fold this over just to, so I've got a nice edge there because it's just, it just seems, it's just a lot neater of an edge. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this. Closed and same over here. Now, if you're going to make this a removable, then you could now cover the back of it uh, with some. You know, just some leftover, just some scrap, uh, scrapbook paper, you know, on the back and make it, you know, something that you could just clip into the side of a journal. But I'm going to go ahead and glue this on. I want to trim this little bit of lace off here. And for that, I use my fabric scissors that don't ever cut anything but fabric and, and pattern paper. Those of you who sew know what I'm talking about. And you can see, actually, that could use a little bit of a trim. What we could do here is I could, I don't really want to trim it right here because I just glued that down. But what I could do is um, attach a little piece of cardstock here and I kind of like that because it sort of matches the rows that way I can make it exactly even so maybe I'll just go ahead and do that so that's the nice thing about crafting isn't it or if, you know if something isn't exactly right you can just fix it I love junk journaling. I was a quality engineer for a long time, and I worked in co in companies that uh, had super super tight tolerances, and um, so you know, 
you didn't really ever want to make a mistake because if you did you had to throw whatever it was that was being made away and um, a lot of times there was no fixing it I mean some of the tolerances were so incredibly tiny they were like um, almost the width of a hair and that's not even an exaggeration okay let's get this baby on here and we'll just trim it Okay. Fold it up like that. Trim it on the bottom. And voila. All right. There are no mistakes in <laughs> except right here. It's <laughs> still a little bit short that's okay i'm not gonna worry about it all right now i think i'll ink that afterwards because i'm not really sure what color i'm going to use but i'll just kind of cut this a little bit short just so it has a little bit of a frame in it and you don't have to do anything like this you can just go ahead and collage it um, any way that you want but um I just kind of like the way that looks with the with the picture that's inside and all the other ones that I did I just collaged but this one is gonna get a little bit more of a highlight so This is all just experimentation, right? If it doesn't work, just work around it. I'm so glad I got a refill for my art glitter glue before winter. So now when I, because that one's getting low, and when I run out of it, I'll be able to just get some more. Or I have more in my closet, which is nice. Okay, now let's just trim. Because for some reason, they don't ship the art glitter glue in the winter, I think because it freezes. So when it was like October, I guess, I told my husband, I need to get more art glitter glue. So we did. Oh, I like the way that looks. Now what you can do now is you can glue it down and sew all the way up like I did on some of the other ones, um, or you can round the corners, which I actually might want to do. Go ahead and trim this a little bit more, just a tiny little sliver. And this way too. down here as well. Okay. Now this is a good time to put a thumb hole in, do any rounding, um, do any sewing on here that you might want to do, um, a good time to ink uh, the edges, which you can do you know when it's closed up too but if you want to ink these top edges this is the time to do that so I'm going to just trim that a little bit there and I think in this one I'm going to go ahead and add a thumb hole and then ink that edge
Uh oh, let's have to stop. <laughs> okay. I like my thumb hole in the center. So I just, you know, kind of find a center point on my mat and then mark it with a pencil. And then that's what I use to cut my thumb hole. <laughs> and except it just doesn't want to cut. Okay, it's not going to cut. That's not fun. It's stuck. <laughs> oh boy, crafting fail. Okay, well, I can kind of see the outline, so I will just cut it with scissors. Oh, it did cut almost all the way through, so that's nice. Okay, that didn't turn out too bad. And I'm going to round these corners. And this is the Crocodile Corner Chomper. And I think I'm just going to do the quarter inch part. Yeah. Okay. Here, I'm going to ink the edges. Just use. I think I'm going to use Wild Honey because I kind of like the way that color looks. I took some empty spools and put these little make makeup sponges on them and um, labeled them. One thing that um, is good to do too, before you cut the opening out, but after you've traced the, uh, the marking on there, you can go around and ink those edges before you cut it out. And then that way, all the inking is already there. So you can sew around this or you know not totally totally your choice. Let's give a little color here. Kind of vintage it up a little bit. some vintage photo as well. Go around the edge of the window a little bit. I like that. It looks like there's a stain right there. It's nice and vintagey. Okay, the other thing I like to do on these is to add a little bit of interest up here in the corner. And I have these uh, Tim Holtz flowers that I've been using. And I really like the ones that have this kind of a shape and I just think that looks gorgeous like that so that is what's gonna go there now I'm gonna uh, just I think I'm just gonna glue the sides down let's see I'll use the art glitter glue 
and some of them I have actually sewn them shut but I think on this one I'm not going to do that this time I love that if you see Victoria magazines anywhere snap them up because they really do have the most beautiful images Okay, I'm going to ink up the white edges on this. And I have... Hmm. Maybe we'll put some bling on there too. The nice thing about this kind of a project is you can um, do a whole bunch of these cutouts ahead and just, you know, get them all glued on and then later on decorate the pocket any way that you like. Let's see. Do I want any anything at the top? Besides my flowers, I don't think it really needs it. Nope. Okay. A little more inky there. Okay. Because this is going on uh, the lays, I'm going to go ahead and use the Fabri Tac. When I first started making junk journals, you know, it, well, before I started, I mean, to me, glue is glue. I didn't really, I mean, I knew some things about glue because I also do cosplay and, you know, gluing on things like leather and, and stuff like that. You need different types of glue, but, you know, I never really thought about anything but just, you know, regular old Elmer's for, uh, for paper. Oh, I really like the way that looks. What do you think? And then if we want to, we can maybe add a little butterfly, maybe? To the to the book there or something like that. Let's see. Nope, not that guy. Oh, I kinda like that one. What else do we have in here? He might just disappear. Just adding a little bit of interest down there, but there's already so much going on that I don't really want to do too much. But let's go ahead and add some life there. Oops. Back here, where'd you go? Okay. And I'm gonna glue this into a journal, so I don't mind if the if the wing is kind of hanging off the edge. I sort of like that. So um, you know, if it was gonna be a removable, I would probably either put the whole butterfly on the page or cut off the part of the wing that hangs over. But I kind of like the movement that is suggested here. So I like that. Okay, done. What do you think? If you, um, if you thought that this 
you know, if you like this project or you thought you might want to try it or um, if it has some value, please like, subscribe, and share. And um, enjoy the rest of your crafting day. But I also wanted to show you what this would look like in a journal. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so this is the journal that I recently finished for myself. And I've started writing in it already. Uh, let me see, let's find an open page. Um, okay, about like right there. Okay, so you could glue it to a page. Um, and if you had decorated the back, obviously you can just clip it in. Let's see. So what do you think? I really like the way that this one came out. So I hope you enjoyed this. Again, if you did like it, please like, subscribe, and share. And have a wonderful, happy day of crafting. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. I almost forgot to put the instructions out so that you could see them and maybe take a screenshot. And so here they are. I hope they're pretty easy to follow. And I will put a link to um, the tracing paper that I used in the, in the um, description. All right, everyone have a great day. Thank you, and I'll see you later. Bye.